Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. I want to start off by saying thank you to all of our Booster Club members for your many donations and much more your prayers. We visited faraway countries and strange lands. We've even spoken to dignitaries and were detained for spreading the glorious gospel in Cuba. The truth is that the descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel were scattered throughout the world. Help us on our journey as we continue to raise up the nation of Israel. 12 tribes worldwide. Join or donate today. Shalom. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Today we're here with Bishop Nathaniel from Israel United in Christ. Um, you know, I've definitely seen Bishop Nathaniel all over the internet. Um, I've seen some things that they have done, you know, at least I saw last year with uh, Uganda, and, they, and he gets to talk about the different work that they are doing. So, Bishop Nathaniel, thank you for joining us on the show today. Yes, sir. All praise to the Lord. Thank you for having me, fellow. I appreciate it. All praises to the Lord. Thank you so much. All right, Bishop Nathaniel, you know, tell people a little bit about, you know, your organization, Israel United in Christ, um, you know, because there are people who are on our channel that say they are uh, Hebrew Israelites, but kind of explain that to people because, you know, some people may not know, you know, about, you know, Hebrew Israelites or, or how it got started or, or anything like that. All right. Well, Israel United in Christ is a, definitely a faith-based, Bible-based organization uh, we teach the truth according to the Bible. I know everyone says that they teach the truth. However, if you notice the truth of Christianity, they never mention so-called black and brown people in their sermons, in their theology teachings. Israel United in Christ, we have found out that our people are part of the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. And as Israelites, we are commanded by Christ to go worldwide and gather the forgotten people, those black and brown people that suffered during the uh, sub-Saharan slave trade and the transatlantic slave trade that is recorded in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. So our mission, our goal is to go from country to country and reawaken our people and bring them to the truth that they are the Israelites, according to the Bible. That's our job. That's our mission, Phil. OK, so you go going to the four corners of the earth and trying to gather the people. That's right. And definitely. Um, it's a spiritual thing, a spiritual connection with the with their roots, according to the Bible. Christ is a black man, just like you and I. He's not European. He's not Caucasian. He never had blonde hair and blue eyes. Never, ever, ever. All right. So let me ask you a question. Then, prior to the transatlantic slave trade, you know, that's to go go back to then. Um, when when was the first introduction of the scriptures, um, and in what area? would you say the scriptures were introduced to in the world? In the world? Well, actually, I could go back to Adam. But what I'll do for time's sake, I'll, I'll go back in terms of what they call Christianity. I'll go back to the time of Christ. When you read in the book of uh, Acts chapter, uh, actually, you know what I'll do? Matthew 15, 24, Phil. I'm going to go there for you. Where Christ said this, he said, uh, but he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now watch this. Here's something that most churches and people don't realize. When you go to Matthew 2.13, I'm going to read it. It says, and when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt, and be thou there until I bring thee word. For Herod, which is a white man, will seek to will seek the young child to destroy him. Joseph and Mary walked into Egypt. They fled into Egypt. There was a time, Phil, when you could walk from the land of Israel into Egypt because it was all connected. It was one huge continent. What happened? The so-called white man built what's called a Suez Canal, okay, in 1869, dividing and separating Israel from Egypt. Now I'll say this. The biblical scriptures have always been in Africa, from the time of Daniel, which was in the Babylonian captivity, all the way on up, even prior to that, the Bible has always been on the continent of Africa. 
What is new to the minds of the people is the current perversion that colonialism has done. During the Berlin Conference of the late 1800s, those were the ones that sent their ministers, their priests, their Jesuit priests into Africa and destroy the minds of the people. Those guys did that. They were the ones that began to teach Jesus is white, okay? And even before that, with the coming of the uh, Dutch, the Portuguese, they began to uh, inch their way in throughout the continent of Africa and pervert the words of God, saying that Christ is a white man, love everybody. And when they did that, watch this, uh, Phil. I'm going to show you something what they did. Uh, when you go to the book of Daniel, chapter 8, and I'm going to read verse 25. And excuse me if I'm going too fast. It says, and through his policy also, he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand. It's talking about the white man. And he shall magnify himself in his heart and by peace shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes, which is Christ, but he shall be broken without hand. So the point I want your listeners to understand is when it says, and by peace shall destroy many. The white man's uh craft, his plan was always to enter the continent of Africa, just like in America, they brought forth peace, love doctrine. And what did they do? They introduced smallpox, disease, uh, Ebola, things of that nature, Phil, and destroyed the people. When I go from Uganda to Ghana, Nigeria, Sierra Leone, you see our people, are, a lot of our people are mentally and spiritually destroyed, okay, because of Christian, what they call modern day Christianity. They have done a hell of a job on our people. All right. You hear what I said, Phil? Yes, sir. I heard exactly what you said. And, and, and I believe exactly, you know, what you believe. Um, white Jesus has been a crippling um, of our minds, you know, and also spiritually. And, and notice how people waking up, they are rejecting white Jesus. Okay. That's right. they, they're rejecting it. They don't want nothing to do with it. And I believe this current generation right now, if you do the research, at least here in America, the younger generation now, they, they have rejected, you know, the, 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 the white Christianity. They don't want nothing to do with it. They don't. And, and I'm so glad because the pre you look at the previous generation, like the more so the civil rights generation and the ones that kind of held on to that. Um, it seems to me that they they had a they, they would go to church and they were fighters. But to me, it seemed, and maybe you explain that to me, is when the 501c3 came in, it like that crippled the black church in America. And it's like they were just decimated after the 501c3. Am I am I right about that? Because you know, in the church, you had people like Martin Luther King come out of the church and all of that. And many other people, the church was like the epicenter of the black community to go strategize and then fight, you know, whatever, right? Um, but maybe you can explain that to me what happened to the church in America, because it's like now it's like a joke. You know, the okay. pastors out here just get money. You know, they 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 pimping and, uh, you know, and have literally whole tracks in the churches. But maybe you explain that to me, brother. I'll explain it to you. The 501c3, number one, it had it had nothing to do so much with the uh, uh, crippling the church, because like me, myself, there are many Israelite organizations who have a 501c3. But what do we do? We're waking waking the people up. OK, even Minister Farrakhan, they got one. They, it, we're waking our people up. I'm not saying Farrakhan's waking people up, but what I am saying is that uh, it's the, the doctrine of what the black church has pushed that has destroyed the minds of the people. With the 501c3, this is what happened, Phil. Let me show you. I'm going to give an example in John 11. John 11, 47. I'm going back to the time of Christ. It says, then, then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees a council and said, what do we? For this man doeth many miracles. Here it comes. If we let him thus alone, all men will believe on him, meaning Christ, and the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation. What happened with many of the 501c3s is that America set up theology, theological, theological teachers from their theology schools, just like Rome set up the scribes and the Pharisees. That's where the problem comes in. When you have leaders set up by your enemies, when your enemies or your oppressors, that might be a nicer word for your viewers, when your oppressors set up and dictate who your leaders are, that's the problem with the black church. Because many of the, if you notice many of these black churches today, I'll give an example. Uh, T.D. Jakes, Creflo Dollar, Juanita Bynum, uh, give me some more. You got Pastor Noel, 
You got Donnie McClurkin, you got Kirk Franklin, so-called gospel preachers. If they can gather their monies together, even what's that guy in Baltimore? What was his name? Uh, uh, Jamal Bryant. Jamal Bryant, right? Is that it? Jamal? Bryant. Yeah. And he went over to New Birds now in Atlanta. Right. If they can take 10% of their earnings and come together, they ain't, cause we, they, we're not saying be poor, but take a portion, a small portion of your monies, come together. They could rebuild Chicago. They could rebuild Baltimore. They could create their own school system. But because they are, uh, the they have been brought up under theology, the white man's system, their mind is not about nationhood. Their mind is not about solidarity. Their mind is not about gathering the lost sheep of the tribes of Israel, which we are. They're not about teaching the truth. It's about self-gain. How can I make a, a dollar out of 15 cents? That's the problem, Phil, like it says in Timothy, for the love of money is the root of all evil. It's not the money per se. It's the love of it. When that's your God, that's what's wrong with the black church today. And they can do so much good if they just come back to the truth that they're the Israelites, that we have a king who the world calls Christ. And he looks like you and me, a black man, as described in the Holy Bible. Phil, you mean to tell me Creflo and T.D. Jakes never read the description of Jesus Christ in Revelation chapter one, verse 14, 15? They've read it, Phil. They've read it and been told reject that, deny that. It's not important, Phil. It's not important for black people to know Jesus looks like them. That's their mindset. I hope everybody understands what I'm saying. You got me, Phil? Oh, they, they, they under, well, we definitely have talked about that here, you know, many times before. And, you know, like I tell people how I've even came to the knowledge that, that, that I have, it, it comes from, you know, many, many fronts. I mean, because initially I had started off in, in in the church and i've learned some things there um i've learned you know uh some things definitely through you know in all the people out there like uh you know elijah muhammad you know the nation i learned through them um i've learned through even people that's even israelites out there that said some things to me that like okay I mean, these brothers right you know and I, and I will give you guys this the different whether it's you guys or other israelite camps i know y'all don't all agree but one thing I do say that y'all do more than anybody else, y'all do a lot of evangelizing because these people in the churches, they don't get on the street corners like you guys do. Right. They don't, they're not in the highways and the byways and, and they're not traveling to the different countries like you guys are doing and actually preaching. You guys are showing up and why they going over there, like you talking about the Creflo dollars. How many times have you ever seen Creflo dollar in his on the street corner talking to anybody? No. You know what I'm saying? His, jet um, won't, his $65 million jet won't land there. <laughs> yeah, you go. There you go. There you go. <laughs> you know, and, and you guys out there in the streets with the people and talking with the people and, and the people, uh, you know, you're reaching them. You get what I'm saying? But let, let me ask you this. Now, I got to hit you with some 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 tough questions because I got to ask what the people would ask. Right. Mm -hmm. So they're they were saying that. OK, explain the scripture that talks about that we were going into slavery for 400 years. And a lot of people even said that, OK, um, why do we go into slavery? Why are we in this particular curse? And is it done? Okay, very good. Uh, we're going to open it with Deuteronomy 28. What I want your listeners to understand is this. Moses and the Israelites, this is all taking place on the continent of Africa. It is not taking place in France or Germany. This is happening in Africa. So when you read Deuteronomy 28, they're just making their exodus from Egypt, which is in Northeast Africa, and they're going up towards the land of Canaan, which is Northeast Africa. And as I said before, Phil, remember, 1869, the, the white man built the Suez Canal, cutting Israel off from Egypt. That's what they did. That's the plot, the plan. Now watch this. Deuteronomy 28, I'm going to read verse 15. This is Moses speaking to us in the wilderness. But it shall come to pass... If thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. The first thing we want to observe, Phil, is this. People ask us when we're in Uganda, we're in Nigeria, we are in Sierra Leone, what is the true religion? That's always the question. I'm going to read it again. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments. So then we ask the people, what did God give the Israelites? They all acknowledge commandments. 
So we asked the question, did he give us Jehovah Witness? Did he give us Baptist religion, Catholic? They all answered no. Those things are not in the Bible. Islam, not in the Bible. The true religion, when you read from Genesis to Revelation, is God's commandments. Okay, that's number one, Phil. So now, he said, if you break these commandments, these are the things that's going to happen to you. Watch this. We're going to find out, Phil, right now, if these curses identify the white man in Israel or the black man here in America scattered throughout the world. Let's see, verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long, and there shall be no might in thine hand. So our sons and daughters were taken from us in Nigeria, in Ghana, throughout Africa, and sent to America, sent to Iran, Iraq, Pakistan, India, okay, Japan. And it said, there shall be no might in your hand, meaning no economic might, Phil, no uh, military might, no political might to regain our sons and daughters, okay? Watch this, verse 32, I mean 33. The fruit of your land and all your labors shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up, and thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed always. Who goes throughout Africa and takes the natural resources? That's the fruit of the land, the cocoa, the beads, the bauxite, the gold, the diamonds. It's these Europeans. Now China's getting involved in it. It says, and thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed always, so that thou shalt be mad for the sight of thine eyes, which thou shalt see. So these are some of the curses. Now watch this, Phil. Watch this. Watch this. Verse 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb and a byword among all nations, whether the Lord shall lead thee. What does that mean? Our biblical identities would be changed when we go into captivity. No longer would we be called the Israelites. We would be called what? Afro-Americans. We'd be called Jamaicans, West Indians, Haitians, okay, Dominicans, Puerto Ricans, Mexicans. They, the one, those of us in Iraq, they call us Afro-Iraqis. Those of us in Iran, they call us Afro-Iranians. Those of us in India, they call us CDs, okay, or Dalits, they call us, okay, meaning the outcasts. That's what they do. Now, here comes Phil. Pay attention real good. Verse 48. I want you to put that picture in. Therefore shall you serve your enemies which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. And he, meaning your enemy, shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. Let's get the real one. Get the actual photograph, okay? I want y'all to see the actual photograph of one of our ancestors who had the yoke of iron. No, that's a, that's a movie, okay? That's a movie. I don't want that one. That's LeVar Burton. I want the actual photo Okay, he's, he's, there's a brother standing up in an Israelite garment, and he's holding the yokes of iron with his, with his hand. It's big, okay? So, Phil, what I want y'all to see, God says that we would serve our enemies for food, clothing, water, all these things, okay? If you see that right there, I want your, your viewers to see that, okay? This is what the Bible's prophesied about, yokes of iron on our neck, okay? I didn't make this up. I didn't write this. Now, here we go, Phil, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. The word Egypt, Phil, I want all your listeners to listen good. The word Egypt is synonymous for the house of bondage. When you read Exodus uh, chapter, bear with me a second. Bear with me a second. Mm -hmm. Exodus 20 verse 2. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Egypt is synonymous for bondage when you read the Bible. So in Deuteronomy 28, verse 68, watch this. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again, meaning bondage again, slavery again, watch this, with ships. With what? With ships. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And there, once you get off the ships, Phil, you shall be sold unto your enemies. For bondmen and bondwomen, meaning slave men and slave women, and no man shall buy you. There's not going to be no man who could redeem us from the curses God put, up, put on us. Martin Luther King tried, they assassinated him. Malcolm X tried, they assassinated him. Marcus Garvey tried. They, they banished him to Jamaica, then England, then he had an aneurysm and died mysteriously. Kwame Nkume, he tried, he failed. Uh, who else you got? Thomas Sankara of Burkina Faso. Okay, you got Kwame Nkrumah of Ghana, all these, and there's many more great black leaders. 
who rose and fell. You even had females, Sojourner Truth, Harry Tubman, who tried. The only savior, Phil, is Jesus Christ, the black Messiah. He's the only one, and I'm speaking English because I know you're listening. Well, his name isn't Jesus. There's no J in the Hebrew. You know who I'm talking about. Christ, all right, the black Messiah that the Bible has prophesied from eons ago. So the Bible, Phil, was written by our ancestors for us in these last days, according to Romans 15, verse 4, where Paul says the things written aforetime was written for our learning, that we, through comfort and patience and hope of the scriptures, might have hope. So we have hope, Phil. Now, Phil, watch this. Watch this. I ain't done yet. I want y'all to listen good. Deuteronomy 20, watch this. Deuteronomy 20, verse 64. And here's another curse. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth, even unto the other. And there you shall serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. Now, what gods have we served here in America? Watch this, Phil. I'm going to tell you what Christ said. So Moses said it, but did Christ warn us about it? Matthew 24, verse 4. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Who went throughout the continent of Africa saying they are Christ? Who came to the shores of America and said they are Christ with the false images that they painted? Who did that? The so-called white man. Christ was warning us about the so-called white man coming to deceive the world, coming to deceive the nations. And they have done an excellent and diabolical job, Phil. Watch this. The description of Jesus. Is it in the Bible? Is it in the Bible? And I know it might be going kind of fast, but I got I to gotta, I gotta account for time. Revelation chapter 1 and verse, I'm going to just get to the point, verse 14. It describes Jesus Christ. His head and his hairs were white like wool. Wool is a texture, Phil. It's not a color. I'm going to say it again. Wool is a texture, not a color. As white as snow. Now, that's the color. So he had wool hair, which is another term called Afro hair. Afro hair is wool hair. Wool hair is Afro hair. Christ's hair was fully white. Then it says, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, meaning he drank wine in moderation, and the whites of his eyes turned red. You can read about that in Genesis 49, verse 12, if you want. Verse 15, here's the color. And his feet, like unto fine brass, brass is brown, as if they burned in a furnace. So how dark was Jesus Christ? He was so dark, Phil, he looked like he was burned in a furnace. And his voice as the sound of many waters, meaning he spoke very, very loud. So have we been deceived here in America? Yes. Have we been deceived in Africa? Yes. So, Phil, here we are. We go to Africa, a black nation, and you have white images of a white Jesus all throughout the continent. It makes no sense, Phil. So the white man has done an excellent and diabolical an evil job. You heard what I said, Phil? Exactly, exactly. And like I said, that now see that image of Christ, I can get down with. I couldn't, I couldn't get down with the Mazungu version. I can't do that. Matter <laughs> of fact, if you invite me to your church and I see the Mazungu version in there, I walk out because I already know you. Don't, you don't, listen, y'all not right. Don't invite me in there. I can't deal with that. I just can't deal with a lot of situation. Okay, so so you answered okay that question. Let's go to the next question. Somebody will say okay. They say, okay, you say we were disobedient. Okay, fine. Okay, other people are disobedient as well. So why are we, we even been called the most moralistic people in America, even the white man plays that game and say, you guys are just, you guys are better. You guys have morals. Okay, they've done the worst to us for hundreds upon hundreds of years. You know, lynchings, you know the history, uh, yeah. beatings, bombing, you know, our thing, our churches, uh, destroying everything that we have built. OK, and now black people in this day and time, they have literally, literally reverted back in our position in a lot of ways. OK, all our fighters that we had that would take a stand, um, you know, like you said, they was either jailed, killed, et cetera. Right. So now you had the 400 years happen. And even in Ghana, they had the year of return celebrating, the, you know, the 400 years. And I have seen a shift in consciousness. Um, ever since the 400 years have came. So I'm asking you, based off of those 400 years, what's going to happen to us now globally? Because I'm seeing a, a now an awakening, 
starting to happen, even on the African continent. So what, what's going to happen with that? Are we coming out of this bondage finally and going to take our rightful place, or what's going to happen? Okay. This is what's going to Well, I'm going to deal with the first one first, because all nations are breaking God's law. So people say, why are we the ones being punished? You have to realize, all nations were not given God's commandments. The commandments was given to one race of people. That's the 12 tribes of Israel. So because we received the commandments, it was our job to subdue the nations and teach them. We didn't do them. When you read the book of Psalms, it said, we did not destroy the nations whom God... Come. Let me see if I can find it real quick. If y'all know what it is in Psalms, is it 106? Let me see. Let me look. Bear with me, Phil. Bear with me a second. 105 blah, blah, and verse 34. It ain't 105, 34. Let me look. Oh, here we go. Psalms 106. And I started 34. They did not destroy the nations concerning whom the Lord commanded them, but were mingled among the heathen and learned their works. So in our disobedience, Phil, God had commanded us once we subdued the nations, we were to teach them. We didn't do that. We mingled among them and wanted to be, we wanted to, I'll give you a, a more modern word, assimilate ourselves to them. Just like here in America, we want to be like them, act like them, talk like them, think like them. God said, no, you are a separate people. And that's what we, that was the message Christ came to give us. Now watch this, Phil. Amos chapter three. I'm gonna answer the second part of that question. Why are we punished? Amos three, verse one. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you. O children of Israel, against the whole family, which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. This is why we suffered Deuteronomy 28, verse 15 through 68, because he gave us the law. We broke them. Now we're in this punishment. But now the second part of your question, when are we coming out of this? Here we go. Let's go to Hosea 5. Watch this, Phil. Pay close attention. Hosea 5.15 reads this. I will go and return to my place until they acknowledge their offense. So God is waiting for us, a remnant of us, to acknowledge we're the Israelites that broke your commandments, O Lord. Forgive us. That's what he's waiting for. It says, till they acknowledge their offense and seek my face. You seek God's face in the Bible. The scriptures, this is where God's face, his thoughts are. It says, in their affliction... They, sh they will seek me early. So now we're in, this is where we're at now, Phil. We're being afflicted as a people. We're realizing that this white man is not God. This white man is not Jesus. He is the devil the Bible speaks of. He's the wicked descendants of Esau, Edom. E-S-A-U, Edom is E-D-O-M. That's who they descend from. Now, when are we coming out of this, Phil? That's your question. Here we go. Lamentations. When we begin to repent of our sins, Phil, God said this. Let me get it. Lamentations chapter, bear with me. Mm. Lamentations chapter four, verse 21. It says, rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom. This is the white man that dwelleth in the land of Uz. The cup also shall pass through unto thee. Meaning the plagues that we receive, the judgments going to pass to the white man. Thou shalt be drunken, thou shalt be made naked, meaning shame. Verse 22. The punishment of thine iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion. That's us. Our punishment is almost up, Phil. He will no more carry thee away into captivity. He will visit thine iniquity, O daughter of Edom. That's the white man. He will discover thy sins. Because the white man took this book as theirs, went throughout the world and perverted it, okay? Corrupted the word of God. Now judgment's coming for them. Our captivity is almost up, Phil. But only a remnant of us is going to repent and accept the words of Christ. Okay? People say, well, what are you going to do? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Repentance is key, Phil. Repentance is key. When you read the book of Matthew, and please forgive me if I'm going fast for, you, for the listeners, but y'all could probably just rewind the tape. Matthew 19, a man asked Christ, what do I have to do to get eternal life? Watch this. Matthew 19, verse 16. Here go. And behold, one came and said unto him, good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? Now, eternal life, Phil, number one, eternal life is more than just living forever. Eternal life is rulership, dominion upon the earth. That's what 
eternal life makes reference to. And you can read about that in Revelation 21. We can read that in Daniel 7 near the end, 10, 7, 18, Isaiah 60, 10 down. It talks about eternal life, which is world domination. That's where we're going, Phil. We're going to dominate this earth. Now watch this. So what do I have to do that I may have eternal life? Verse 17. Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. You see what Christ said to do? Keep the commandments. Three words, Phil. Keep the commandments. It's three words, but it's so difficult for our people to understand. You're going, no, I want to be a Jehovah Witness. No, I want to be a Muslim. No, I want to be a Seventh day. No. Christ said, keep the commandments, those same commandments your ancestors broke from the time of Moses. Keep those. That's all. That's the message, Phil. But our people make it difficult because of white man theology. Well, Seventh day Adventist, Jehovah Witness, a Lutheran, Episcopalian. No. Keep the commandments. You're the Israelites. Repent as the Israelites. Come back to the God's commandments. And our punishment is almost up. You got that, Phil? I, I got you. But what if somebody say, well, aren't you part of that remnant? Did, did, didn't you take, stand in the gap, uh, you and the Israelites that we have now for, for, for the people? Because, you know, you, you admit that we have been um, definitely propagandized. We have been colonized. Uh, we have been brainwashed. You know, a lot of us. Because um, some people could say, um, and, and well, I've definitely seen the change, you know, in black people as of recent. I'm going to say we're definitely um, within the last two years, I've seen, you know, a, 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 a change with black people in a lot of ways, even in re regards to, uh, like you say, the white Jesus situation. It's not taboo anymore to say white Jesus. Um, it's not taboo anymore to say, I'm not going to these people's church. I'm not giving Rev my ties. I'm the hardest banger against Rev out here. Rev do something, I'm on him. You know what I'm saying? And at one yeah. point in time, anybody that spoke against Rev, you, you are a traitor to the black community. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, so yes. what I'm saying to you is this, is that even people may hear you talking and say, oh, man, uh, what he got going on with all that? Like I said, listen, what, 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 when are we going to take our, our stand? When, that's, that's what people want to want to focus on. It's like, are we going to sit up here and, and, and just say, hey, either move on or we're going to just keep having this love, in my opinion, black folks, you know, love uh, the Mzungu too much, okay? And I personally believe, you know, I've accepted you guys uh, a mindset where two-thirds of the black folks ain't going to make it. I accept that because I've seen some of us just too gone. I've seen it. You know, like, listen, when they open it back up, you running back to the Chinese, you know, after the, they even kicked your butt in Africa. I mean, I'm sorry, oh, yeah, and in Africa. Kicked your butt <laughs> in Guangzhou, kicking your butt here in America, and you still getting them your money? Exactly. Hey, Phil, this is what we got to do. Uh, when you read Zephaniah 3, verse 8, it says this. Therefore, wait ye upon me, saith the Lord, until the day that I rise up to the prey. For my determination is to gather the nations that I may assemble the kingdoms to pour upon them mine indignation, even all my fierce anger. For all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. But now what can we do right now, Phil? That's, the, that's your question right, right now. Zephaniah chapter 2, verse 1 gives us, gives us a clue. It reads, gather yourselves together, yea, gather together, O nation not desired. See, gathering together as a nation, that has always been very difficult for our people. Like you made a, a mention, we would like to patronize the Chinese before we patronize our own people. We right. would patronize the Arabs before we patronize our own people. That's a problem amongst us, Phil. You know when Christ said in Matthew 5, to love your enemies? You remember that, right? Yeah. That, the churches have perverted that from the time the white man came in. Listen, listen, listen. That, that's a biggie right there. When Christ said, let me get the verse so I ain't misquoting it. Matthew 5, verse 44. It says, uh, but I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Now, remember this. Christ was talking to a group, a huge crowd of Israelites. Now, what was going on amongst the Israelites is something we call today black on black crime, black on brown hate. That's what was going on. Can I prove it? Can I prove it? Watch this. I'm going to go over here to Exodus 23 because everything Christ said was already spoken of in the Old Testament. Watch this. I'm going to Exodus 23, verse 4. 
I want your listeners to understand. What is Christ talking about? Exodus 23, verse 4, it reads this way. If thou meet thine enemy's ox or his ass going astray, thou shalt surely bring it back to him again. If thou see the ass of him that hateth thee lying under his burden and wouldest forbear to help him, thou shalt surely help him. So here Moses is saying, help your enemies. Okay, but who's that talking about? The precept is Deuteronomy 22. Watch this, Phil. Watch this. Who's this enemy we're commanded to help? Deuteronomy 22, verse 1. Thou shalt not see thy brother's ox or his sheep go astray and hide thyself from them. Thou shalt in any case bring them again unto thy brother. And if thy brother be nigh unto thee, be not nigh unto thee, or if thou know him not, then thou shalt bring it into thine own house, and it shall be with thee until thy brother seek it after, and thou shalt restore it to him again. So the brother that Moses was speaking about calling your enemies was our people, Phil, our people. We had issues with each other. That's what the churches have mixed up or the white man purposely misconstrued that and said, no, 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 we're going to make this enemy, meaning the man that enslaved you and raped your mother, love me. Le no, it ain't talking about that, Phil. It's talking about your brothers that you have problems with. You understand that? Yeah, I understand that. You meant okay. basically to, to love and forgive your own people. Yeah, I, I get yes. that. I preach that to everybody. It, it doesn't mean to, to to love and forgive the white supremacists like black folks have doing. Dylan Roof kill your uh, your your family, and he's called talking. He ain't even went to jail yet. I forgive you, like, but we don't forgive <laughs> black folks. We really, hey. we tear black folks' head off. Right, Phil. You know what? People often ask us the question: Didn't Jesus say, "Love your neighbor as you love yourself"? Yes, he did. Here's what Jesus Christ got that from. Watch this. Leviticus 19, 17. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. So, Phil, your neighbor is the children of your people. That ain't the white man. That ain't the Chinese. That ain't the Arabs. We got to come back together as a people, Phil, and love one another. That's the message of Christ. Unify, unity. That's the message of Moses. That's the message of the Bible. Solidarity. We must come back together. I agree, Hunter. But let me ask you another question. Um, and you could talk about that. You know, with, with the rise of China, is China uh, considered the king of the East from the, from the book of Revelation? When you read Revelation about the king, it says kings, plural. Okay. Kings, okay. But is yes. he the main character? China that. the main character? Yes, yes. It is included in that. Okay. So, yes, China's a part of that, and they're going to come against the Lord. All right. Let, let, me, let me get that real quick. Bear with me a second. It is Revelation 16, verse 12. And a sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up. That's what them dams and all that that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. So the kings of the east, you got uh, over there, you got China. Under that, you got over there towards uh, Iran, Iraq. All that's going to play a key pivotal part in the third world's war. That's coming up real soon. Just sit back and wait, and it's going to hit. America's Babylon the Great. It's going to be destroyed, Phil, from the top to the bottom. This place is going to be eradicated. That's Revelation 18. There's nothing nobody, you can't protest and stop the, the judgment of God. I know many of our black people, when Obama became president, they said, he's our Moses. Well, Moses gave an exodus from captivity. Obama didn't give us an exodus from captivity. We still here. Okay. <laughs> so, hey, Phil, another thing, the purpose of Jesus Christ, because somebody says, okay, well, if Jesus, the black Messiah is coming, uh, how you guys going to be delivered from captivity? Well, when you read the book of Luke, chapter 1, watch what Christ is going to do. You're, I want all your Christian listeners right now, throughout the continent of Africa and America, pay close attention to what salvation really is. Luke 1, 68. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. We're the Israelites. For he has visited and redeemed his people and has raised up a horn of salvation for us, for us, in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, since Genesis. 
watch this, verse 71, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. So who's our enemies? We just read it in Deuteronomy 28, Phil. Your enemies would put yokes of iron upon your neck. Your enemies would sell you into slavery. Your enemies would colonize you. So our enemies are all these nations, Phil, that we have such a love for. Christ said, I'm coming to save you from them. But our people don't understand that. So that's a part of repentance, Phil. We got to acknowledge who the enemies are. Sure, you might find it. What about you? Here to go, Phil. What about if you meet some oh, a nice white guy or a nice white lady that wants to help? That's fine. But that the Bible says, never trust your enemy. For like as iron rusters, so does their wickedness. That's Sirach 12 and 10. So never trust them. They sure today they might do something nice to you for you, give you welfare, give you public assistance. But tomorrow, guess what? They're giving you hell. Okay. Hey, you remember Justin Volpe, Phil? Remember the guy that re uh, put a plunger up uh, Abner Louima's rec rectum? Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah. I, I remember that that case. Yes. That devil got out of jail, and Governor Cuomo gave him a job in the um, housing department, making six figures. I'm like, what the hell? How many black men come out of jail and don't nobody give a damn about them? But the white man comes out, he gets a six-figure job. It makes no sense, Phil. We are hated here. They don't love us. We got to come back and unify as a people, Phil. That's what we got to do. Blacks and Latinos and Native American Indians, we got to stop the self-hatred that divides us. Come back as one. Okay, but what if but but what if somebody tell you, well, okay, if this is gonna happen, because a lot of black folks that's invested here, um, I, I just me personally, because when I got to the land in, in on the continent, I felt spiritual connection to it, right? I don't feel that connection here in America. It, it doesn't even feel right, to be honest with you, it just don't spiritually. Um, do you believe that we should return back to the continent? Because you're doing a lot of work on the continent yourself. You know, yeah. you're there, you 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 preaching the message. Do you believe that that's the place for us to have opportunity and for us to actually grow and be in peace? Because I believe that we can't be in this land. You're talking about coming back to, to God. I don't really think you can do it as often in this land because it's too wicked. I, I believe personally you can do it a lot better over there. Because um, societies are more conducive for that. Mm, I'll say this. The continent of Africa, we're doing a lot of work there, Phil. Mm -hmm. uh, we visit there every year. We're building up the people. We're setting up sanctuaries and schools. And the schools that we have visited, we're, we're sending them uh, up-to-date books and Bibles for, the, for our sons and daughters to read there. So we're doing a lot of work there. But I'll say this about the American black man and black woman of today in America. Africa right now is good for some of our people, not all. And when I, when I say not all, I'll say this. I'll give you an example in the media. There were two sisters in the, in the military, and I don't recall their names off the top, but they were so called, quote unquote, lesbians. They moved to, I believe it was Iraq, and they said it's easy to live here, but they were lesbians. That's the problem. And they started to bring that uh, lifestyle there, and they got arrested and were imprisoned. Okay, mm -hmm. some of our people who have not repented, they need to stay over here before they go over there and bring their, their, their give me a nice word, somebody, give me a nice word, give, bring their filth. I, that's the only word that comes to my mind. Oh, I, oh, I, I, oh! Well, no, when it comes to that, no, that won't be tolerated. I, I can tell you right now because African society, would, would, the best word I can use is conservative, and right. conservative, even conservative white folks don't really get down like that. So they are really conservative in African society, like like Uganda, for instance. You was in Uganda, you better not go over there with Museveni doing that. Right, that ain't right. about to happen. <laughs> it ain't about to happen. They they don't put. Uh, I think was it Ghana was another place. Where World Health Organization, World, no, World Bank told them, well, you got to accept that or you don't get no aid. They say, well, they will keep your aid then. They say, we don't, right. we, we don't want it. I mean, that's how serious they are with that. Uh, yes, yes. So the scriptures teach us that out of America, one third of us, is, that's Zechariah uh, 13 and 8, one third of us is going to be delivered from America, which is Babylon the Great. The larger portion is going to be in the continent of Africa. Yes. And a portion, a smaller portion in Europe is going to be delivered. Uh, and we're all, oh, guess what, Phil? Jerusalem is going to be the, the capital of the world. That's what the prophecy says. And, you know, Phil, people often ask me, how do you know the Bible is a true book? How can you put your hopes, your dreams, your aspirations in that book? Well, I'll, I'll say this. Deuteronomy 28 talks about, this was written 3,000 years ago, Phil. 
It prophesied the enslavement and destruction of black people going into slavery on ships with yokes of iron on their neck, their sons and daughters being taken. And I asked them, did that happen? They say, yes. Then I say, I would be a fool to read that and then go, well, when it says those same people are going to be delivered and go, no, nah, I don't believe that. You got to believe the whole book and nothing but it's the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So help me. We must believe the whole thing. As sure as we went into slavery, according to prophecy, we're going to be delivered according to prophecy. We must believe that. But the stipulation, Phil, we must repent as Israelites and keep the commandments. There's no other way around it. You're not going to be a Catholic Nigerian and get into the kingdom. That's not what the Lord's looking for. He's looking for Israelites who repent and keep these commandments. That's Revelation 14, 12. Okay, and many other scriptures, Matthew 19, 16, and 17. That's the message. That's we, Matthew 15, 24, Matthew 1, 21. That's what we must do as a people. Repent as Israelites and keep the commandments. You heard that, Phil? Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, 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 now people here in America, which like I said, I've always said America is Babylon and and like I said, they're doing, you know, like I said, Donald Trump, I believe, has, has been very, very instrumental in speeding up uh, the time on the white supremacists more than what they think. Um, that's why I firmly believe, you know, based if you look at what he has done within a, almost a short amount of time and, and how he literally breaking the whole system down, not not for the not for good. They think he breaks it down for good. But no, he literally um, enacting, I would say, uh, a judgment, you know, in a lot of ways um, yes. upon them. You know, within a short amount of time, they feel like they're almost getting close to the Negro in, in, in their dealings. If you look at how, you know, they coming out with guns, talking about uh, I'm free and, and, and calling the slaves and all the other things like that. Um, do you believe Donald Trump is, is being used by the Lord at this time period? You said used by the Lord of heaven and earth or used by the powers that be? What, what did you say? No, 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 no. I mean, because you know, you know, the Bible, don't the Bible teach that, that God's in control of all leaders? Oh, yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, do you believe God's in control of Donald Trump to be used for certain things? Oh, yes, yes, yes. He's being, see, for too long, Phil, you know, the Bible calls Babylon. It says, Revelation 17, 5 says, mystery, Babylon the Great. And we always focus on Babylon the Great, but we ignore the first word, mystery. Why is it a mystery that this place is Babylon the Great? Because when you ask our people, Phil, you say America's Babylon the Great. You know what they say? No, it ain't. They gave me food stamps. They give me welfare. We go to Africa. Many of them say, no, no, no. They give us foreign aid. America gave us uh, $200 million. They say, wait, stop. That's why it's a mystery. Because America does much evil, Phil, like Donald Trump included, Bill Gates included, but behind the scenes, Phil, they do much evil. I'm going to read a scripture. I'm going to go to Habakkuk 3.14. Watch this. About Watch this. Thou didst strike through with his staves the head of his villages. They came out as a whirlwind to scatter me. This is talking about America's space force coming to the scatter Christ. Now watch this. Their rejoicing was as to devour the poor secretly. They do secret stuff, Phil, behind the scenes. There's an old expression, Phil, that says, he that pays the piper calls the tune. And I, I spoke to the, with the, pre, the vice president of Uganda, and I was explaining to him, foreign aid is a trap, okay? When they give you this money, you must dance to their tune. It's a trap. Like Ecclesiastes 7 says, uh, how does it go? A gift destroyeth the heart. So... Although you go to Africa, Phil, I'm going to say this. America's reach is long. America's reach is very long. They're putting money to the leaders of Africa. There's, it's only one leader right now, like the president of Ghana, uh, Nino Ado. I, forget, I might be pronouncing his name wrong. Adido Nano, something like that, Phil. You can look it up for me. Uh, he says, I don't want no more foreign aid. Remember, Thomas Sankara said the same thing of Burkina Faso. And they paid his best friend to assassinate him. That's how the European powers get down. So, yes, Trump is being used. Bill Gates is being used. For what? To reveal to our people, Phil, that they are the sons and daughters of the devil, the white man is. 
They're the sons and daughters of Esau, Edom. That's them, that wicked race. So God is making them do evil, making them speak evil against us, do evil things against us. So we can open our eyes and see this is what the Bible's prophesying about. They, we must start to open our eyes and wake up, Phil, because the preachers are doing a piss poor job. You know what I said? Well, well, well this, this thing I want to say real quick for before, before, before wrap this up. Yes, they have got down like that for a long time. Yes, you know, for sure. Like, hey, if you don't dance to our tune, we'll just get you out of there. But one thing I have seen has changed, which, which has been a great, uh, I believe, equalizer. And, and, and normally they like to move in the shadows. They don't like to be exposed in what they're doing. Social media has literally made world leaders move in ways they did would not have moved in the past without the videos coming out and, and people talking about it. Or um, even you have the introduction of China, even though we don't like that. That still plays a part on the continent of Africa a little bit. Uh, when I spoke to certain people about the Chinese and why they, they start dealing with them versus, they say, the white man, like you talk about, is because they didn't get involved in their affairs. But China has their own nefarious reasons why they do that. Right. Um, so for me personally, I understand what you're saying, but I do see a turnaround, you know, and I can see it, you know, within the next 10 years for sure. It's not going to look the same for us every year. I'm seeing and it may look bad, but I see us coming out and growing in statue. Um, I see the world image itself, um, even with the beauty standard has changed. If you notice that, that you have the, the so-called Mzungu woman mimicking everything the black woman's doing so much. So she's, she's ejecting everything in her face. She's doing it. She's literally trying to put braids in her hair, everything she can to mimic, you know, the original. Right. Um, yes. I, I'm seeing more and more of us waking up, more and more of us trying to connect back, like you said, to the land. Yes, not all going to connect. I understand. Like you said, I believe two thirds of us won't make it. I'm with you. I'm with you. And I'm OK with that. I can accept that because they we had a point that some of them just need to get out of the way. I, I just feel that way because they have harmed black people, period, more than the so-called white supremacists. Right. Mm -hmm. um, do you see our future a lot better? Because you talked about all of the bad things. That's great. But what is our future? For I'm gonna leave you with the last question. What okay, is our future? future, Phil? Our future is world dominion. Is Africa going to grow on a great scale? Yes. But before that, there's going to be destruction. I don't want us to forget Armageddon is coming, what the world calls World War III. Watch this, Phil. Watch what I'm about to say. The European powers allow uh only, only 11 African countries to make small weapons. 44, 44 African countries are forbidden to manufacture weapons. Y'all could Google it. You can look it up. So America has 33 um, military bases throughout Africa. So that if they ever rise up, bang, bang, bang. They're going, I already see what, they, what the plan, the plot, the plan. Okay. So now I'm, I'm going to be on the nice side, Phil. Yes. When we raise up as a people under Christ, we're going to rule this earth in righteousness. All nations, Phil, outside of the 12 tribes of Israel, they're going to be captive. That's Revelation 13, 10, Isaiah 60, 10, verse that all the way down. We are going to dominate the world in righteousness. So do I see Africa on the upcome? Yes, in righteousness. With this truth getting out there, the seed will spread throughout this earth. Did I say that okay, Phil? You all right? Yeah, hey, no, I'm not sure. I'm not telling you how to how, how to speak, brother. I mean, I think I think you, you can do that a lot better than me. You all over the world doing it. So, you know, like I said, I'm I'm just still I, I'm always a student, never the teacher. But but Bishop Nathaniel, uh, tell people how to um get to you know your website and, and, and your, your teachings and everything so people can maybe ask some questions I didn't ask. Okay, all praises. Uh you can reach us at www.israelunite.org. You can visit us on Facebook, Israel United in Christ. Uh, we have various pages, IUIC Uganda, IUIC Nigeria, IUIC Sierra Leone, many African nations, IUIC Nigeria, I said that already, uh, Ghana. Uh, you can just Google us and we will pop up. But ignore the evil haters slandering stuff that's said about us. Ignore all that. Hey, hey, Phil, you know what Google did? This is a war, Phil. Google put every evil thing they put that first above the righteousness that we're trying to put forth. SPLC, oh, they're a hate group. They hate everybody. They want to. No, we don't. 
hate everybody. We, we don't want to kill people. We just tell you the truth according to the Bible. So you got to do a search for us. Go through our website and we'll send you. The, you'll see the links of where you can go to keep up with us and follow the messages. All right. Well, that's that's interesting. I, I've always said I, I don't think people who have a history of hating people should be judging anybody that hates anybody. I just don't think that they should be doing that. Um, you know, and I think people have a right to go check things out for themselves, whatever that may be. Right. That's so, right. you know, he, he gave out his his links. We'll, we'll leave links and you guys can go check out, you know, for yourself, um, you know, what they believe or you can go ask questions yourself. You know, here we're about talking with everybody in our community. And, and that's what, what the program is for. Uh, talk to everybody, no matter how we believe, we'll talk to you. So, you know, Bishop Nathaniel, definitely thank you for joining us today and ha having a conversation. People got to hear, you know, from your, your side of the story, how you believe and, and, and the works you guys are doing. And uh, you guys stay blessed. Thank you, Phil. Oh, most high in Christ bless you all. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road. Purple and gold from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.